Look at the crowd, look amongst you, look at each other. We are normal, decent, sensible, reasonable, logical people. That's why we're here to say 10 years of war in Afghanistan has not brought peace, not brought justice, not brought hope. It's brought corruption, it's brought lies, it's brought huge profits from military companies, and it's damaged our civil liberties through successive pieces of anti-terror legislation. An hour ago, I went back to my borough briefly because I wanted to attend and support an organization that's doing its best to support and help homeless young people in London. Young people, no flat, no home, no hostel, no job, no benefit, no fees, no college. So what do they do? They turn to drugs, they turn to hopelessness, they turn to misery, they sleep on the streets of this capital city. The mayor might want to clear them off the streets to make the city fit for the Olympics, but the reality is that the homeless people, the hospitals that can't cope, the schools that are overcrowded, young people that are in flats growing up in such overcrowded conditions they don't achieve in school, all those that are losing their jobs in the civil service, losing their pensions in the civil service. That is a result of an economic strategy of the crazy house, which is to cut rather than invest, destroy rather than build. Yet, this country still thinks it can spend 25, 30 billion pounds a year on arms, can buy a new generation of weapons of mass destruction, otherwise known as nuclear arms, to threaten the rest of the world and continue the occupation of Afghanistan, continue keeping some troops in Iraq, continue bombing Libya and continue building an armed service that has in their terms global reach. When you attend the anti-cuts demonstrations, make the point! Do we want homes and hospitals and schools or bombs and destruction and prisoners and the loss of life? We know what we want. It's important to get that message across as loud and clear as we possibly can. Please make sure you do so. George made the point, made it very well. Who makes money out of wars? The Afghan war has cost billions. It's cost the lives of hundreds of British soldiers, thousands of American soldiers, tens of thousands of Iraqi civilian, Iraq Afghan civilians, and it's brought in its wake poverty, corruption, and drug dealing. It hasn't brought peace, it hasn't brought justice. It's brought drone aircraft bombing Pakistan and neighboring countries. And it's made unbelievable levels of millions for arms companies and security companies that frankly should be called mercenaries. What we're doing, in the Stop the War Coalition is not isolated, not alone, not defeated, not forgotten. We are here together to give that message. As on February the 15th, 2003, in 600 cities across the world, people gave the same message. The war in Iraq was wrong. It was based on a lie, as Julian Assange has pointed out, and so many others have pointed out. So my message is this, had we not founded the Stop the War Coalition in September 2001, there wouldn't have been barely an alternative voice. There was a mere handful of us in Parliament who voted against the Afghan war. More voted against the Iraq war, but somehow or other some people believe the Afghan war is a good war and the Iraq war is a bad war. Wars are bad, period. Wars do not bring victories, they bring measures of defeat for everybody. That is the message we want to give today. And so I urge you, if you're not a member of or supporter of Stop the War Coalition, join in. It's a coalition, a coalition of all kinds of people and all kinds of views, united in the cause for peace and justice around the world. Join in and make sure that alternative voice 
is heard. Stand up against this obscene consensus between the front benches in Parliament and most of the media in this country that somehow or other good is coming from the Afghanistan war. No, it's not. It's only misery, it's only defeat, it's only danger that is coming from it. Today you heard a fantastic array of speakers, a fantastic array of talent, artists, musicians, actors, writers, journalists, people that pursue the job that I pursue. And as we finish, we're going to form up and we're going to march down to Downing Street. And we're going to be led, yes, led, by Hetty Bauer, aged 106. She stayed here all day in order to...